Welcome to Gulfstream today. Today, it is Thursday afternoon. <laughs> it is a beautiful day. A main track is fast. The turf course is firm. Ron Nicoletti, along with the lovely Gabby Gaudet. And uh, should be a fun day of racing. It is Thursday. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yes. Because they've all kind of blended together. Well, so I had much. to think for a minute before I actually <laughs> said it. So it's Thursday and uh, fast main track, firm turf course. And uh, being Thursday, tomorrow is Beat the Expert Day. And guess mm -hmm. who's up? Me. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, what a pose that is there. Boy, do I look tough. Huh? Are, are you going to show cheap speed again, Ron? That's going to be my question. <laughs> I've, I've last two times to beat the expert, I've won the first four races and then nothing else. But I had someone put the hoodoo on me who's uh, sitting close by in here. So it's a lot of fun. Make sure you join where you get to the social or uh, social media sites and uh, play along with us. Uh, beat the expert. Hashtag beat the expert. It's a lot of fun if you... Pick more winners than me tomorrow. You get one of those. Uh, you got a chance to win one of those sharp polo shirts. I don't think you've paid your debts yet either for that bet that we had a couple weeks ago with the cheap speed. Yeah, what is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I can't. Well, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about, about it that. off there. But obviously, you can go on uh, Facebook.com slash uh, Gulfstream Park. And a couple weeks ago, we had a record number, number of participants. So this thing just keeps on growing and growing. People are really interested in doing so. And um, we have 10 races on tap to do it tomorrow. So best of luck. Yeah, and you get those bragging rights. And if you come visit us here, make sure you come by the <laughs> stage wearing that shirt and throw it up into our face. And uh, <laughs> we're going to tell you about what we have to offer this afternoon as far as wagering uh, each and every day we start with a rolling super high five but we have seven or more runners in the field and uh, we have the first of two pick fives this afternoon you'll have a pick five ticket in race number one i will that is a 50 cent based wager and each and every day the early pick five is a mandatory payout the late pick five does carry over if it is not hit yeah, we got the Rainbow Six carryover today of $11,000 plus, which starts in race number five with a 10-race sequence. And we end today with the final pick five of the afternoon. So lots of fun. And, of course, those rolling super high fives throughout the afternoon. As we said at the top of the show, a fast main track, firm turf course. Our first race today, seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Claim is four and up. Non-winners of three in life. 16,000 scratch to nine. Bucate has been declared out of the opening because it was main track only. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly not going to be a problem today. It looks like a beautiful uh, afternoon, or morning now, but afternoon a little later on. How would you see the opener? Well, we will take a look at my early pick Ouch. five here. And I, um, the early pick five is a little bit more expensive than the late pick five. I did find a single uh, later on today in race six. Um, so, or I did not find a single. But if I were um, to single, maybe it would be in race three. I did feel a little bit more confidently in that race. So, but using three horses to kick us off with the three, four, and five as we move along, using the four, five in race two, two deep in race three, and capping it off with the one, four, Four, five in the final two legs of the sequence for fifty-four dollars. But um, some of these races today, I, I would say it's uh, they're very good betting races because uh, you can maybe be, bet against the favorites in here with maybe the second or third choice in the wagering. But for those pick fives, you almost want to use them protectively. Um, so you probably have to spread with two or three. Yeah, horses. you have to spread. And that's the, you know we always try when we put our tickets together to try and find that single so we can add more horses and races just like the opener today. Uh, you went with the three horse in here, Spanish Armada, one of the horses I used on my ticket. And he's going to break towards the inside. He broke from one of those outside posts. I still haven't seen horses win consistently from out there. Especially at seven and a half furlongs or even the mile. And that's uh, really why that I went back to this horse. And obviously, this is a better post than what he has been in the past two starts. But two, he has been um, exposed at this level in the past. And he is two for 21. So I don't know if you can have too much confidence in here, uh, Ron. You went with the number five, Modern Tail, uh, who has been formful at this level, too. Yeah, you know, he's wheeling back at that same level and distance. He broke slowly, rallied late to 
finish third. Uh, the trainer is Elizabeth Dobles, and she's got Javier Castellano in the saddle. It's a five-year-old gelding. I used uh, Mad Patriot on the ticket, too, a little bit of a, I don't know if he's a price or not. He's you know, fourth choice on the morning line, and I, I think we have the logical two or three on the ticket. I think this race was kind of tough because, say, you have the four Bon Gusto here mm -hmm. who's coming back to the turf. We used to show speed, and that was against a little bit tougher of a, of a level, but the barn, you know, um, it just trying to heat up, heat up a little bit uh, first off the claim with their statistics. Mm -hmm. So although that horse um, merits some respect for the back form, I don't think you can have confidence in, in really uh, narrowing in on that horse. So mm -hmm. I think in the first leg of the pick five, you really want to have some coverage. Yeah, and we certainly uh, did that. And you also had the one on the uh, bottom part of your ticket, one you did not use on your Rainbow Six. Let's go to race two to say what, today, one mile maiden claim is three-year-olds, 50,000 down to $40,000 in here. Uh, I went with the number of five horse in here, uh, and that's Facade, who's stretching out to a mile today. Uh, shipped in from Actagot, uh, went from turf to dirt with lace added, rallied to finish second against this caliber of competition. Bobby Ravallo's the trainer, Joe Bravo in the saddle. Uh, I just thought he was the logical one. We got our exact flip-flop. And this horse is the 7 to 5 favorite on the morning line, and probably one that definitely warrants respects, respect. Excuse me, did get Lasix for the first time last time out, and Woodrow, the winner of that race was a Todd Pletcher first time starter. I just didn't think for the level the race came up that tough. Um, and you look at his uh, pa his race last time out, this horse uh, actually broke well and he was taken up immediately at the start. And I thought that he just couldn't make up the ground that was lost in time. So I think uh, he definitely could be competitive against this level. But I went with a class dropper here with the number four Speedy AP, um, who is dropping in class from Maiden Special Weight Company down to this $50,000 level today. We'll show a stat for trainer Dale Romans with this type of move. Maiden special weight to maiden claimers on the dirt going a distance of ground. He's seven for 25, 28% positive ROI over $2 and we do he does finish in the money 52% of the time and this is just kind of um, an angle that I frequently played here in South Florida Dale Romans whether it be on the turf or the dirt um, a lot of his horses coming from Kentucky they do well on the class drop he, he, it's just a strong angle for him here so that's the direction I went in but he will have to show a little bit more improved speed and having a lot, a lot of success using Corey Lannery mm -hmm. with all those horses and that's what's gonna happen I close it out with the one equity stretching out to a mile, turned from about a seven-month layoff, finished a useful fourth. There's a solid group of state-bred maiden special weight competition going three-quarters of a mile. Thought he could be on the ticket there. I think we got the logical, too. And well, I also gave some interest to the number seven, the money train. Uh, last time out, they tried the turf to no avail. But in his first start, it looked like he broke a little bit slowly. He was down on the inside, and he was just getting uh, dirt in his face left and right. And he was throwing his head, kind of kept his head up the entire way. It looked like he didn't like that whatsoever. So. I was interested in maybe using him as an outsider, thinking with an outside post he could stay in the clear. Yeah, and I, mean, I put him on my ticket, too, for all the reasons you mentioned in there. But uh, as I mentioned, I, I don't know. I think the four and five are, are where you got to mm -hmm. go in that particular race. Race three this afternoon, a one-mile allowance optional claimer. Phillies and mares four and up. They could run for that optional claiming price of $62,500. Uh, six uh, select runners in the field. And my top selection in here was the number three, Mo Green. And Mo Green, uh, along with my awesome mom. We want to go back and show your performance of these horses back on December 26th. And my awesome mom was the five horse that day. And number seven was Mo Green. And, and you know, we're going to highlight the five horse in here. Just breaks badly in there and gets in some trouble in that race. And yes, uh, we could see that that was my awesome mom. Right. She did break a little bit awkwardly. It almost like looked like she broke outward at the start. She probably lost a length or two from the get-go. But then we can see her kind of make this move. And then she just flattens, whereas uh, we saw Mo Green, she was making up a little bit of ground, just trying to chase the winner, Bodacious Babe, home. But um, I thought it was a stronger performance from Mo Green, although you could argue that my awesome mom did have tr trouble at the break. Right. I, I just wonder if she might like a little bit shorter, maybe, you know, cutting back to three quarters versus stretching out with right. more distance to the mile. And, and if you look back in that, the Mo Green sort of got pushed out a little bit in the stretch there. So, I, I mean, I thought there was a lot 
Sounds going. You did go with the number six horse on the, uh, on top of your ticket in here. I just think she's faced better, Ron. You look at just uh, the class here. I'm my awesome mom. She has faced decent level of competition, but it's primarily been, you know, in the past on the turf um, throughout the summer here at Gulfstream. And then we have Mo Green, who she's got some class out of the two. She might be a little bit better. But Linda Mimi, she ran in, in the grade one against off the track. She ran in the Princess of Silmar between Kentucky Oaks winner Catherine Sophia. And yes, yeah, she put in a clunker last time out against graded stakes company at Belmont. I just think that she's been in an awkward position of chasing um, pretty strong fractions going two turns. So I like the fact that she does uh, cut back in distance here to the one turn mile. And maybe the strategy for her would just be to get aggressive and go. She yeah. might be one to be better on the lead. Yeah, and, and you know, I, 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 she's the two to one morning line mm -hmm. favorite in here. And I thought she might be the logical choice of choice course trying to get cute a little bit maybe you know put it in fourth and I can get Mo Green uh, and you know sort of a, enamored with the name a little bit if you are a uh, fan of uh, the Godfather you know know uh -huh. about Mo Green so <laughs> I don't know if they're pointing me that direction but I want to mention one other horse before we flip the page and that's Meadow Road is debuting locally for Nick Gonzalez over a couple of strong allowances performances up on the Tapeta uh, surface at Woodbine it's the Stronach stable so it's a homebred daughter of Go Zapper Javier Castellano I think it's a horse you got to throw somewhere in there. Well, it's a small field, but it's a very potent right. field, and there, I think it just matters on trips who likes to uh, stretch out or cut back to the mile, and uh, if some of the black back class uh, resurfaces there. It, it is a very tricky race, I thought, um, but I think that Linda Mimi does come out of stronger races. And that was the one you almost thought of singling. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yes, know. but uh, the, the reason why I don't is because that was such a bad race last right. time out, and you have to wonder whether or not she's just simply the same horse anymore. Right. Well, I mean, she kept some good company, and uh, mm -hmm. Gustavo Delgado had an awful lot of success with his runners up in New York over the summertime. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe this is, that is the logical horse in there. The race number four, five and a half furlongs, maiden claim is four and up, $12,500. First scratch of the day comes in this race. It's the number three horse in here. Raptor were both in agreement with the number one Stradivisky's quest. The violin guy, right? Stravinsky's, Stravinsky's quest. quest. Yes. I liked the three, Raptor, and of all <laughs> All the horses that could have scratched in here, this horse scratches at 12 to 1. So I did um, default into the one Stravinsky's quest uh, listed as a first time gelding today and comes back to the main track where I just think that he ran a pretty legitimate race. But this horse is very lightly raced as a five year old. So there are question marks. And, uh, and when you're looking at the early pick five, sometimes these races can be the trickiest when you get to the low level maiden. Yeah, I mean, this one's getting the, uh, the ultimate equipment change, the surface switch, you're hoping those po produce po positive results. And how good has Nick Wara has been riding at this meet? He's been doing a good job. Uh, Archivero in second, turning back to five and a half furlongs. You know, he's, uh, uh, the barn is three for 47, only 6% with the one to seven day layoff. So uh, a minor, minor interest with that horse for me. And is a long time made. And I know he's only had three main track starts there. So it's not, uh, you can't hold it against him too much, but he has started to rack up the defeats as is the key. Uh, the six key the storm who is 0 for 20 on form um, and he's only hit the board five times and we're talking about horses that are five to two and two to one on the morning line so I think when you and I approach this race we just thought well there's probably some other alternatives than right. the two shorter price horses. Yeah I mean uh, any way you look at it in here you got to try and uh, uh, beat the horse like that that comes with a record we're talking about key to storm so let's take a short break and when we come back we'll look at my rainbow six ticket. January 28th at Gulfstream Park, an icon takes flight. The world's richest thoroughbred horse race. 12 of the sport's finest horses. One race. $12 million on the line. Watch Wager Weakness. Go to PegasusWorldCup.com for more.
Always an exciting part of the afternoon when the Rainbow Six starts in race number five. And we're going to start it off today with a one-mile claiming event. Four and up, non-winners of three in life, $6,250. One jockey change to let you know about on the six, and it is Juan Leva. And let's go to my ticket. And this, I'm excited about this ticket here, $57.60 actually stepped up. No way could I find a single this afternoon. You always I find a single. I didn't find one today. I just could, I didn't. I almost singled the one in the last race who I think is lone speed in there. So that was my thought process and I, I stepped it up a little bit today but uh, as we mentioned, always a guide uh, you know, put your own ticket together of course because if you use the same one as me, we both would hit the Rainbow Six. But uh, just to give you uh, some thought process in here and interested to see how you spotted the, this fifth race. You feel that confidently about it today. Yeah. You said it if, if yeah. anybody else would play a Rainbow Six, you'd both hit it. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Well, best of luck to that. Yeah. I I like the ticket. I thought that the late pick five was a little bit easier to manage than the early pick five. We'll get to that in race six, though. And to start things off, non-winners of three lifetime uh, for the 6250 tag. I went to the five Grand Identity Dad and. You always have to question what happened to this horse last time out when he was defeated right. over 16 lengths. That was a case where Morgan's Harbor actually uh, in the race prior was facing higher level, I think for the 12-5. That horse actually dwelt at the start. He came back, dropped in class, and he just blew the field away. So I don't think it's that bad. Um, and if we look at Victor Barboza Jr., I want to show a stat here for this particular trainer stretching out from sprints to routes on the dirt, 33% at 71% in the money and a positive ROI over $2. So this is a horse who I think just is better when he goes the mile just because he can get in the game a bit sooner and doesn't have to be so pace dependent. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the horse I have fourth in this race, of course, you didn't use on the ticket you have mm -hmm. on top. So uh, that just goes to show you how tough this Rainbow Six situation. The one I have a lot of confidence in here, but I did go with the four over the limit who's stepping up to the next level. He responded to the switch from turf to dirt and the stretch out to a mile by drawing away to defeat a pair of next out winners. So it was a key 6,250 two lifetime claimer at the distance. So uh, uh, I'm going to the key race angle there and I thought it was a pretty good performance last time out. And I'm going to see if this one can make a tuner. Not always easy to step up to that next condition. It's not always easy to go back to back when you're going through a low level conditions. But um, last time out, you know, I, I thought that he was uh, able to go on the front end and kind of do whatever he wanted to, kind of a slow pace there go last time out going wire to wire. And I do think that the one Jack West is going to show speed from the rail. This is a horse who's stretching out from seven furlongs to the mile today, draws a rail post position. I think he has to go. And will that soften up a horse uh, like your top selection? Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that Jack West has more back form to work off of. So that's where I, I kind of saw these two maybe dueling on the front end and setting it up for my horse who could probably be just sitting right in the catbird yeah, seat. Yeah, sitting in the catbird seat behind him and uh, we talk about it, Arm Armando De La Cerda all the time. He's doing an excellent job here and he's trainer of the number one Jack West in there and also this one stepping up to that, to two, you know, to th from two lifetime to three lifetime. So keeping with that theme, Sky Guy is another moving up to the next logical level after sitting chilly early and drawing clear late. He defeated 6,202 uh, lifetime foes going seven ass Seven, seven furlongs last time out. The gelding broke his maiden going a two-turn mile at Gulfstream Park West. It's funny because a lot of these horses are graduating from the non-winners of two to the non-three level. Um, and it's uh, you. we have a couple of horses that could show similar speed in here too. So uh, one that you probably want to use several horses to start off in the pick six. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough way to start the sequence. I went three deep, but I wish I could have gone four and maybe added yours. That was my actually my fourth pick, as you can see up there. Race number six this afternoon, one mile on the turf. Claimers, three-year-olds, $35,000. And uh, I guess we should start off with uh, the replay of Wilshire Star. Yep. Does yep. that sound good? We'll go yep. to the replay of Wilshire Star. Of course, the number one uh, to the inside is going to be the horse to beat. But uh, we drew this um, particular one. Right. And I thought that it was a good performance yeah. from this horse. Yeah, I mean, it ran pretty good in there. And it just Wilshire Star shows, uh, you know, broke a few steps slow in that race. It was rank early in that race and uh, cut back to the quarter pole to the wire. And that's actually the wrong race. So <laughs> yeah. we'll get to that in a second. I, here. I was wondering where you were going with that. So if we can. Uh, <laughs> Um, but we can see, we'll show that uh, replay yeah. in the next race here, but race six, 
Um, again, this is kind of a, a difficult sequence, I thought, in the late pick five. And uh, what I said, though, I think it was a little bit more manageable because you can only use two, two horses in the first leg of the pick five. We'll show my ticket here, which is $48, just using the one and eight. And I could have even singled on the one Nassau Talent because yeah. I do really like this horse. But I also think that the eight Motown man, um, who is getting to the turf for the first time today, does have some pretty nice pedigree um, that would suggest he likes the turf. So we'll, we'll talk talk about that more in just a second. I thought race seven uh, was a spread race. That is a higher level maiden claimer uh, going two turns on the turf. So using four in that. In the eighth race, going to be using three horses and open 16,000 claimer. And I kind of saw the last race a little bit similarly as you, where I really like the 11, but the four, Ralph Nix, he's been kind of acquiring these horses lately, especially on the turf and having success. So we'll show a stat for that later. But $48, and I guess you could even make it a bit cheaper if you decide to single the one Nassau Talent. Well, Nassau Talent dropping to the $35,000 level after shipping it from Keeneland to finish fourth. That was a 75 optional claimer at the distance. But the obvious question is here is why the drop? And that's mm -hmm. why I couldn't single a horse like that. I, I just thought that was a, a curious drop in competition for me. And I can understand putting number eight Motown Man, as you mentioned, a really nicely bred son of City Zip who's hoping to get to the, on the turf today, in which he will because he got the rained out last time out. Well, sometimes it's hard to predict Ken and Sarah Ramsey, you know, horses that are dropping in class, because sometimes it's a get-out race and they win, sometimes they don't. Um, yes, it's kind of a curious drop here, going in for that $35,000 tag after being protected against Allowance Optional Claiming Company. Lemonist, uh, he was he was the winner that day, he was uh, disqualified, but that was for uh, trainer Todd Pletcher, and he looks like he's got some talent, so maybe this horse just can uh, do it on his own talent alone, but should be able to get a nice stalking trip to the inside. Uh, Motown Man, as we mentioned, um, he I think he should love um, the transition to the turf today, being that he is by City Zip. Yeah, I mean, it, it just all points that they wanted to get this one on the grass, and you can understand why. The trainer's Ian Wilkes, Julian Leperu in the saddle. We closed it out with the number seven gray dude who's stepping up to compete, compete against winners today. He shook off trouble. He steady defeated $35,000 maidens going a mile in the 16th. Right here, second time blinkers this afternoon. It looks like he woke up with the shades last time out. And it looks like he woke up with the surface change, too. Yeah. I can remember seeing this horse uh, physically in the paddock, and he had great muscle tone off of the claim. It looked like um, he really did uh, kind of take a couple steps forward for Larry Ravelli, and looking at him physically, it looked like he would move forward on the turf, too. He just had the confirmation uh, that would suggest so, and he did everything like that. But with the clash droppers, with other horses getting to the first turf for the first time, I thought this race came up pretty tough to face winners for the first time. Yeah, and I mean, uh, but I still think you have the logical two with the one and eight on your ticket. Let's go to race number seven, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. Claim is three-year-olds, $35,000. Scratch the two Ant-Man can. Now, we got Wilshire Star in this <laughs> race, and this one moved to the Nick Gonzalez barn after the claim and steps up to the 35 level, return from the layoff. We'll go back and show you that. He bre breaks, uh, uh, you know, he breaks, uh, show the break there after a few strides, he, you know, until the first turn. He's just a little rank early in this race, and that's what I thought it was. And you, you follow him, you go. He looks for racing room, uh, you know, throughout the race. So I just thought he had a little bit of trouble in the last race, and I think he can improve with a, with a, with a you know, maybe a, a calmer start this time out. Yeah, you can see him uh, breaking and actually breaking a little bit too sharply mm. and kind of catching Tyler Gaffleon a little bit um, you know, off stride, so to speak. And then he came uh, down the stretch. It looked like he's down on the inside. He was waiting, 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 and then finally found a seam between the number four horse and the rail, and he slipped through. And this is a, the only question that I think, did he not see Giant's voice to the outside, right. or was he kind of waiting on him a little bit down yeah. the stretch? I mean, it just gets nailed there, and you see it right now. And I thought it was a good performance. A and I just thought maybe he was used a little early in the stretch. He went to the inside, and maybe he was just and maybe it's simple as uh, getting a little tired through the stretch run after being so keen early. I, yeah, it could be that. I thought that he might have waited on the other horse, Giant's horse, because it looked like he was on the lead, and then his head kind of went up, no. and he's like, I don't really know what to do <laughs> when I'm up here by myself. But um, if for, you know, it, for confidence purposes, Giant's voice, the, the winner of that race, he was a, a Todd Pletcher horse that had some a little bit of back class, so we could see him definitely perform. We have a stat here for trainer Nick Gonzalez. First off, the claim on the turf, a, s a small sample size, but 
Um, they've won, and they've won at pretty decent prices. Four for 10, so 40%, 60% in the money, and a big whopping <laughs> $8.35 ROI. So this is a horse that you want to use in the multi-race sequences. Ron, I did prefer another horse in the number four, Passport to Chaos for Trainer Jason Service, uh, just because I think this horse is coming out of better competition. I uh, tried to, or did get to the turf for the first time, last time out against upper level maiden claimers. And look at who he faced in there. I know he was beaten over four lengths, which is always a bad thing on the right. turf. Um, but Clyde's image won that race. He came back to finish second in the grade three Dania Beach and his a uh, couple starts after. We saw Piazza del Campo, a horse that came back to finish third against maiden $75,000 company today. So with this drop, and the way Jason Services horses have been running. I have some confidence with this one. And as we mentioned a little earlier, Nick War is in the saddle, so uh, mm -hmm. a horse I did have on my ticket. But a horse that you had in fourth and I have in second, KLS 43 is dropping to this level. He broke from a post 11, and that has produced only two winners from 37 starters. That's a 5% win average. And f after finishing your rallying fifth, that was $50,000 level. So I, I think the improved post can help this horse this afternoon. Steve Dwoskin, hey, who's in saddle Javier Castellano so I think this horse with the uh, you know breaking closer to the rail can run very well in that spot and I thought you liked the three crime dog a little bit here too for Chuck Simon yeah this one is eligible to show more after racing in tight quarters we'll go back and show you that performance we're going to show you from the quarter pole to the wire he, he's just stuck in the stretch with nowhere to run in there he's the number three that afternoon and, and I just think he's he's you know he had trouble even early on in his race but I wanted to highlight this part he just looks like he's stuck down on the inside Side. And here he, he looks like, I don't know if he can make the move to get through there, but it just really never got the chance to do it. So uh, did the did the hole outrun him or was there trouble there? That's my question. So I got him on a ticket, but not on top. The reason why, and I think it, it's good that you showed that replay. Uh, this horse was coming off a little bit of a layoff, trying the turf for the first time. Stay thirsty, though, his sire. He's 0 for 30 over the past couple of years with horses on the turf. So that's where I took the wait and see approach. Well, and that's a good angle there. So so let's go to race number eight this afternoon. And this one is a, six, a five furlong turf event. Claim is four and up, $16,000. We do have a scratching here of the number two high bar and something that Gabby does all the time, and that's the number six party all night long. Just the opposite, Ron. <laughs> I wish I had time to party all night long, but definitely not the case, especially <laughs> this next couple of weeks. Um, but party all night long, it's... Uh, it, uh, he, this horse, you, you know, he was coming in off of a layoff last time out. I thought ran a huge race. He's got the back class. Now, he is a 10-year-old, so you never know what you're going to get with uh, these horses uh, in their ripe old age at 10. But I thought it was a good performance because he was actually squeezed out of position coming down the lane. You can't really see it uh, very clearly because he's kind of off the picture, picture screen. But there's two horses, and they sandwich him. He kind of squeezes back throughout the stretch. And and then he makes another run. And I thought with that late trouble um, and having to overcome that, he ran the better race of all that he faces once again today. And, you know, my theme this afternoon, he broke from post last mm -hmm. time out. He's breaking closer to the inside. He tracked those fractions of 22 flat. And they went fast in the second quarter of 44 and 2. And for all the reasons you mentioned, Eddie Broom is the trainer, Paco Lopez. Uh, we were exact agreement in this race. That doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. Number five, Bayesian Rhythm is exiting the same race as party all night long a race in which he closed to come within a half length he was 32 to 1 that day he was 32 to 1 and he was a horse too that we're talking about um horses that might have experienced some trouble throughout the stretch. He wasn't one of them. I thought he kind of had an unencumbered trip trying to close from off of the pace, but he still has some back numbers to work off of. The four more. Mia is another one. What do you do with him? He was bet down to the favorite last time out for George Navarro, um, and he what he just he couldn't do it i thought that the race prior to that um it looked a little bit better than it actually was on paper because he was left to his own devices on the lead yeah you know you hope he can recapture the speed he showed mm -hmm. at the meadowlands in that race but he come back and he just didn't do it there george navarro mcl jaramillo and th this barn has been touch and go with the meat all all, all meat long and i mean some horses just run the way they're supposed to and some you know they're not showing that usual speed that they had so uh one of the horses i put on the ticket but i totally 
totally not sold on it. Yes, and I think that's the question that you have to ask yourself in that race. Um, in really, in the multi-race sequences, do you have confidence in a horse like Mormia, or can you take the approach to maybe go against? Uh, I did use the horse in the late pick five, though. You did use the horse, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I just, you know, I think I did too on my ticket because I mm -hmm. went three deep in there, and I was telling you that the whole late sequence was pretty hard for me. So let's go to race number nine now. Let's go. Mile on the turf. Claim is four. Phillies and Mares four and up. Now one is a three in life. Thirty thousand down to twenty five thousand dollars. One jockey change to let you know about, and that is the number one. The rider will be. Tyler Gaffleone and a horse from your neck of the woods here. I put on top of my ticket, and that was the four, Janine Melnitz, who was competitive on this course last year. And I remember this horse running, and that was under maiden special weight conditions. Returns after, you know, responding to a drop in competition with a well made third place finish uh, uh, going on the Laurel Turf. We're going to go back and show you that performance last time out, and we're going to pick it up from the quarter pole to the wire and, and, and just try to close on the outside. And I thought it was a pretty good performance. And what I liked is the way this horse ran here last year, they dropped it to three lifetime and it responded well. And you can see it right here. And I, I just think this horse has a big shot in here today. She could. And she was one that I didn't think that she was really making up that much ground coming down the stretch that day. But we did see the winner came back to take an open $16,000 race and then finished a really close second in a starter allowance at Tampa. So overall, it was a, a pretty productive race. But um, we have seen throughout the meet so far that horses coming from the Mid-Atlantic, whether it be Delaware or even Laurel, especially on the turf, they've needed to drop in class in order to win. And in my opinion, she's making more of a lateral move here. So I went with a horse who has uh, experience here locally. And an angle, again, that I have been using is second time with Armando de la Cerda. It just looks like when they come down here, uh, maybe they just act to um, you know his training schedule or something like that but they just continue to improve when they're in his barn for a little bit longer and I thought this was a huge performance from this filly last time out um, she had so much uh, horse at the quarter pole and then she just angled out under Rajiv Mara and then just surged very late um, to beat the rest of the field here so Louis Saez in the saddle too something I also have noticed is that Louis Saez he rides these kind of mid-level or upper le level, level claimers, whether it be the turf or the dirt, very, very well. He's one of the best um, at, for that kind of competition. So you get both of those um, positive angles. So I did like her. You didn't use, but I, I, the horse that we should talk about is the two Vendita, who is four to one on the morning Yeah, this line. one's stretching out to her best distance. Seven races in, at the distance with two wins after returning from the layoff to finish, uh, I thought, a useful seventh. It was a 25 optional claimer going five furlongs. I expect this daughter of Smart Strike to be show more, more speed at this distance. But the only bad thing is, and I show you this stat uh, just so that, you know, we're thinking, okay, she's got back class. She's going to stretch back out to two turns and have more success and she very well could today but Patrick Biancohen on the turf stretching out from sprints to routes over the past couple of years just one for 39 so three percent it's a very low stat they do run well they just don't quite get there in time yeah now well, once I see this telling stat with only an 84 cent uh, return of investment uh, have to go back and uh, rethink it but uh, I'm going to keep her on my ticket because I really respect the, the work that Patrick mm -hmm. Biancohen's been doing here at the meet uh, we uh, used the number of nine Maddie's Wonder Girl uh, we'll try these three lifetime claimers today if after returning from about a, a three-month layoff to finishing even fourth, it was a 50 starter allowance at the distance. Michelle Nihe, uh, Luca Panici handling the outside post this afternoon. I think this one might carve out a, a nice trip from post nine. Very well could. It looks like we are all over the map in this race. I even went to the five Ortega, a horse that you didn't use. I was just thinking that she, too, was coming out of better races. My only reservation with a horse like this is where is she best? Is she better at one-turn sprints or is she better at two turns on the turf? So... That's where I was kind of questioning her t in this particular condition, but she's dropping from uh, Starter 50 Company. Yes, yeah, Starter 50 Company also like the nine in there, so another wide open affair on the turf here at Gulfstream Park. With that said, we'll flip the page, go to the final race on the Thursday card, seven and a half furlongs on the turf, maiden claiming Phillies. Three year olds in here, we do have a scratch of the six. The 13's going to get in, the jockey's going to be Tyler Gaffneyon. And I just thought the one was the lone speed. I went back and looked at this race a bunch of different times. And I just thought that, uh, uh, you know, that Anthony's last was the one to beat. And we actually have a performance. We want to go back and show you uh, December.
number 28 the Gulfstream Park we're going to show this one from the 316th pole to the wire in front and just gets caught at the wire and, and I, I looking at this race Gab I, I just thought I couldn't find anybody to speed in here was my thought process in there and, and I kept going back as you mentioned the 11's the one to be but I just think this horse has a shot to maybe last this time out because uh, the level of competition and I think it's a lone speed in here she does as uh, she to the inside she's got a great post position giving her running style short run into the first turn she's very quick um, she was stretching out from five and a half furlongs to two turns so I wonder if she was extra sharp that day if she's going to show the same speed as she did last time out if she does uh, she she could be the winner in here but Last time was the time to better. She was <laughs> four, she was almost 40 to one, <laughs> exactly. and now today she's five to two. <laughs> so I did think that there were some other horses that uh, were interesting. One of them being the number four Grace's Drama. We'll show a statistic here for trainer Ralph Nix on the trainer switch um, on the turf, primarily at Gulfstream. He's seven for 38, 18% positive ROI, two dollars and 38 cents, and they finish in the money. And just over the past of the uh, past couple of weeks. We've seen him do it with at least two horses. Yeah. One of them was going two turns on the turf. Yeah. One of them was five for a long. So he's just done really well with these recent acquisitions. And this sort of big drama ran re really well across town at Gulfstream Park on that turf course, hoping to bounce back that stalk and fade here on December 4th. Uh, yeah, Missy El Jaramillo will be in the saddle this afternoon. But you mentioned uh, probably the one to beat in here is, I don't know if you know, it's third choice in the morning line. But this is the one I, I, I struggle with for putting on top. But they did go with the one, and that is Operatic, who's cutting back to seven and a half furlongs today returning to acting broke from post 10 uh, you know finished the week and fourth going a mile I think she's the logical choice on paper but that post has been very tough as you mentioned going seven and a half furlongs and that was my reasoning behind it I went to the inside speed rather than a horse that's breaking from post 11 going seven and a half and now she does break from post 10 with the scratch of one horse towards mm -hmm. her inside but that's not a tremendous no. help to her and now with Julian Leperu in the saddle I'm wondering if maybe they they just try to pop her out of the gate. Maybe she breaks well and try to find a little bit of a pocket going into the first turn, a little bit more forwardly placed than she has been in the past two starts. But I do like her because of um, the races she's coming out of, and I like her because, um, it, well, Julian Leferu in the saddle today. I think this is a, a, a positive change here, um, and the cutback in distance should do her very well. Well, that is how we see this car? I, I think so. Okay. We'll be back in a little <laughs> while. Good luck.